Today we're in Havana, Cuba. So picking up from our previous video, it's May the 20th, 2019. We're in the middle of our full day bucket list excursion from the Royal Caribbean cruise ship, Majesty of the Seas. This would have been about two weeks before the US government banned uh, American citizens from going to Cuba. And uh, so we got in just under the wire. It's uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon as you see the clock there. Uh, we are making our way over towards uh, a cemetery and we're gonna have a guide that's gonna walk us around in the cemetery a little bit and give us kind of some of the history. And so, so this is Cemetery Part 1. ...for them to travel to, to the island. Now, in 1998, uh, U.S. was in, I mean, who was in hands of U.S. Look to your left, this University of Havana. Um, All of these, we're going to be like going around the university. And something is started happening with religion in our country. So the government was trying to establish like a kind of materialism dialectic. So it means... I can tell you that religion was prohibited because maybe you can read somewhere that religion was prohibited in the country. That's not true. Like in the, like in the balance to maybe select which one uh, way. But you see right here, this is uh, a photo of me when I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is you know part of the artwork that we have wherever we go in La Habana. So this all of this area it's connected to the hospital and uh, mainly to the left. We have also uh, one of the school, one of the areas that is connected with the University of La Habana, and it's the 10th. In 1960 to 1990, in 1990 is when the Russian economy collapsed, Cuban economy collapsed, and I don't know if you're in agreement with me, but uh, I think that sometimes when the human beings they start facing, you know, like maybe. So sometimes when uh, you know um, when people start facing like difficulties, you know, in our life, sometimes we try to find like, hey, you know, something to hold, like please, God, help us, you, you know, things that we are struggling. And uh, this is what happened in Cuba. You know, people they started going to churches, going back to churches. In 1992, um, Fray Beto is a Brazilian. So he wrote a book that I suggest you to you to read that the name is Fidel and the Religion. It was maybe one of the first time when it was like maybe little open, you know, what Fidel thought about religion. Because it was like controversial that Fidel, he was, I mean, his family, his roots are coming from Jewish. So he was studying in the Catholic school. And after, everything was like a little complicated for people that they were practicing rarely religion. It was like, come on, man, what's happening? What are you doing? Not everybody was in a way So, so you do this any better. So in 1992, after this book, everything was like getting a little more open. But what exactly just opened everything, finally, we have like some changes. You know, like maybe two or three years before that. But in 1998, we had a visit. We had a Pope po who came to Cuba. His name was Jean Paul II. So Jean Paul II came to Cuba. And we're gonna go to this way. Don't look to your left. <laughs> so Jean Paul II came to Cuba. This is, I mean, he was the first Pope that we had in Cuba. The second one was Benedict in 2002. And the third one was the nowadays Pope, Francis, I mean Francisco, who came to Cuba in 2014. Uh -huh. So when in 1998 the poll came, everything was like more, more, more open. Nowadays it's completely normal to be a religious, uh, you know, practicant. We have any kind of religion, as I know. I thought that we didn't have Mormons, and somebody told me that yes, we have some. So we have Jehovah's Witnesses, we have Evangelic, we have um, Jewish, as I told you, we have about 1,200 Jewish in, in Cuba. Catholic, of course. We have also one religion that is maybe one of the most popular that maybe you have been reading about it. The name is Santeria. If you look to your left, this is the cemetery that we're going to be visiting. And today we're going to be normal to go inside. We need, um, so they have been providing us a service. And this service is a local guy who is going to be taking us around. Normally the tour, it, it, I think it's a little hot now. So I would like just to take part of the tour in the motor coach, like kind of panoramic view. And after this, we're gonna take a little walk because we have some 
of those monuments that I would like you to see, you know, close. So her name is Irma, like the hurricane, remember? Yeah. But she's very good, you know? <laughs> so she's gonna, she's like maybe in uh, her um, 50s or maybe 60. She has been working with us a long time. She's very, you know, she loves us and we love her. She's so knowledgeable. Whatever you would like to know about the cemetery, just ask her. It's the syncretism that happened between Catholicism and Yoruba religion. Okay? I'm gonna tell you more details about it. So Irma is here. By the way, guys, at the end of a tour, I mean, if you feel and if you think that maybe you would like to tip her, she will appreciate it. So tips are accepted, you know, friends. They will appreciate that for sure. So if you look at the cemetery from behind, you will see that it's, it has like a cross in the middle because it's a Catholic cemetery. Take a look to your right and you will see a yellow shovel. This is a replica of the family house. They wanted here a replica of their own house, the yellow one on your right. Falcon is a boy size of the shovel. Look at the windows, the graves are inside. Basically everything was about money. They paid just for what they wanted to have. Take a look to your right or to your left. One bolt. One bolt is for three or four caskets. Each bolt is around 10 feet deep, from the ground to the bottom. Then, after years, undertakers take the remains out. The remains are put in small boxes, and small boxes go to smaller spaces behind or between the tunnels to make room for more family members. The remains are the ashes, because they do cremation as well. Smaller spaces behind the walls for the remains. This is one family plot, another family plot. There is uh, the Cuban flag and the Dominican flag. There is Maximo Gomez. Maximo Gomez came from Dominican Republic to Cuba. Met Jose Martí, our national hero, and they fought together for independence. He, he was called the General of Generals because he survived three wars. And uh, well, he passed away in 1905, Cuban people paid for the pot and for the monument as well. Of course, family members are also there. Okay. On your right, another yellow shovel. Above the door, it says Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez was the owner of the Havana Tobacco Company. Havana Tobacco Company, an American tobacco company, merged in 1902, becoming a monopoly on American cigars. Above the name, an hourglass with wings. It means time flies. Life is short. Ancestors. In 1868, Cespedes' father set his slaves free, and the Spanish War started in Cuba. He's called the father of our mother of land, and he's buried in Santiago de Cuba at the eastern part of the island. Uh, one of his sons was a Cuban president. Something else. When the marble was imported from Italy, with the marble came the symbolism. So uh, you can see on your left a shrouded obelisk. This is another Catholic symbol of death. But it's something you can see only in Italy and here, nowhere else a shrouded obelisk. A surprise! On your right, there is a little shovel which has a brown door. There is Ernest Hemingway's bartender. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway's bartender. Uh, Constante Rivalaigua, the name of the bartender. Uh, look, uh, there is a bar at the old town called El Floridita or the Cradle of the Diary. 
He started there as a bartender and then he became the owner of the bar. He was Ernest Hemingway's bartender and popularized here in Havana, the diary. Bartenders come here once a year to an artist family from all over. Bring flowers, have lemons, and rum, ice. Make a beautiful celebration and toast, according to the door from the 